So continue from the previous video uh, on building this this engine, Louis engine. This Louis engine. What I've been doing just fit the sump, fit whatever you guys can can see here. So I want to mention for this application, you need two really important things you cannot miss. You need this little bearing they call spigot bearing. So this bearing goes on the crankshaft here to support the shaft from the gearbox. So they have the gearbox here. The bearing actually goes here. I think is this the right way around? I think, I'm not sure. No, it must be the other way around. It must be this way around, the hover thing for this side, the hover seal for this side. So basically it goes here and it goes on the crank, helps support this shaft. This shaft, this output shaft, they can't have any play in because it holds the clutch, the clutch pack, and the thing holds the um, primary gears or inside the gearbox as well. But we will get deep into it when I strip the gearbox to fit the the mechatronic thing like that. Uh, yes, if you're willing to do this application, you have to buy a spigot bearing and press them on the crank. Um, you have to use a plate like normal. Um, and yeah, I'm not gonna have to buy a start motor for it because this start motor won't fit because it's off the um, manual gearbox and the original from there is slightly shorter so yeah that's the plan I'm gonna push that in and yeah the other thing i was saying about flywheel this is the flywheel brand new flywheel uh, if you're gonna go into this deep doing this big application you for this application you're probably looking about two thousand pounds to convert a manual car into a DSG, or maybe a little bit more than 2,000 pounds. You must go with brand new flywheel because they, they tend to go wrong all the time. And if you don't fit a um, brand new one, chances are you fit the flywheel, a few months later, flywheel is gone. You have to do everything again. So um, yeah, just a, a flywheel, brand new. Uh, I think it costs about 300 pounds and, and play as normal they should move they should move like this they have a little play up and down um, the make is LUK it's quite a good brand and has some new bolts as well to go with it because you don't want to fit with a second hand bolt because they are stretchable and um, yeah it's guys going really well it's going really well uh, the engine basically is built needs the turbo tandem pump uh, that's minor uh, it's leaking oil from there somewhere oh, I think it's from the filter it's been upside down it does have nothing inside but yeah looking forward to it gonna pull this in and um, gonna fit the flywheel and torque to the spec. Do never over torque or under torque these bolts, otherwise they will snap eventually. I have happens to me once, I torque it just by hand and they snapped. They actually was on my on my car, but you know, sometimes you just, oh, I'll be fine, but it's not, we'll be fine. Just do properly and you only have to do one time and that's it, job done. If you're trying to cut corners, sometimes it's not working very well. Another thing I want to mention, um, I have people asking me on the past, oh, I bought this flywheel, but it doesn't fit my car, the holes doesn't line up. See, these holes here, these two holes is lined up, as you can see. But if you go around, it doesn't line up with this one. So this one. So you have to keep turning until 
will line up with all the holes. We did with all the holes now. No, let's go a little bit more. And a little bit more. And that's it. You see it now? Lines up all, with all the holes. As me, I mentioned that because I have people in the past ask me, oh, my flywheel doesn't fit. I ordered, it's in the back, they sent me another one, still doesn't fit. Uh, what's the right flywheel for it? It's not the right flywheel. Sometimes you have to turn until you find the, the, the right holes. On this application, I don't think this really need the flywheel to be on that specific uh, side. They, they, they need to be on that specific side because the balance. The balance on the flywheel, they made all matching together to balance with the engine. But on some cars, you can actually put the flywheel wherever you like. But some other cars, I don't know if you have this in the past, they have uh, grooves on, on this area here. And if they have the groove on this area here, if you put the flywheel on the wrong position, the car will not start anymore. You, you crank, 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 the wheel not start. And we'll show you all kind of errors on the dash and everything. Um, <coughs> happened to me in the past. I think it was a, a Renault Cascai, something like that, and have that grooves. I wasn't paying attention, I missed um, the holes and then I have to do the job twice and it was a pain in the ass to do. But, you know, things like that, people missed and it's always better to remind and to be certain than to be sorry and you have to do the job twice. But when the customer's waiting, it's really difficult for us to explain to the customers, oh, this happened, it's my fault, I have to do the job again, but sometimes the customers don't always understand. But yeah, never mind. The spigot bearing is in place. I just tap with a hammer, they slide straight in. So the slide straight in is, is fine, but when to take it out, it's gonna be a pain, but never mind. Um, now needs the flywheel bolts in torque to spec. We got Louis car here with engine and DSG gearbox. As I don't, don't have a car to mess about now after the crash, um, I'm gonna start to build this car with a DSG gearbox. So stay tuned. I'm gonna try and record much I can for you guys. Um, go from there. So we got the engine and the box here. This engine came from Vekoma, as you can see there. It's a complete engine that come from them. And it has Kilotubs logo on there and Vekoma logo on here. I'll show you all the amazing work they do. This cylinder head is full, full race cylinder head. So look at the quality on this guys. It's amazing. It's really amazing. So um, yeah, block is brand new and new pistons. Every, everything you can imagine this engine happy. The gearbox is a um, Golf MK5 gearbox. Um, just a second-hand gearbox, just to make sure we get the things right in the first place. Because if we find a proper gearbox like with LSD and all of that if we screw up it's not gonna cost as much with this gearbox so um, you know you know how, how things work when you're trying to modify something or when you're trying to do something that's never been done before and so yeah we're a little bit precautious I think that's the right word um, yeah, so what I have to do now, lift the engine, I'm gonna jack the car and put on the stands first. I'm gonna lift the engine, stick on the engine mount on that side, then I'm gonna remove this engine mount, the original engine mount, and I'm gonna have to, to see what's the best to do this. 
so the engine is in place as you can see the engine mount on the engine side is in place but on the gearbox side i'm gonna have to um, uh, mess about with it i'm gonna have to do something with it because when i try to put this engine mount in place it touched on this um, oil cooler and I don't really want to take the oil cool the oil cooler away from from the gearbox so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have to use the Audi what's it called the Audi engine mount for this and gonna have to try and modify that there the Audi engine mount as well uh, I could do different, I could lower the gearbox enough for this to clear for this to go down and clear the, the space so I can use this mount but the problem would be on the um, bottom of the car the gearbox will come down more than what the subframe is uh, so I don't want to gearbox to be lower than the actually subframe on the car so that's why I want to keep at this level if I lower more than this the gearbox will be lower than the subframe and if you hit um, a speed bump or something like that the gearbox will go will break so um, I want to keep at this level so would leave me the engine pretty much on on the standard position so i don't have to modify this mount modify the exhaust or anything and i'll show you from this side i'll show you from this side uh this gearbox they they are quite big the um, drive shaft will line up with the hub no problem because it's on the standard place ever take and it comes out quite far a bit if you guys can see here it sticks out more than the chassis like this but that wouldn't be a problem and i'm gonna have to modify these pipes because they're touching on the gearbox and i don't want these pipes to happen anywhere and i don't want to modify the, the chassis leg either so yeah i'm gonna find what i'm gonna do with with that mount so i just made the mount i mock up the mount so what i done was i cut a plate it's about 10 millimeters thick i cut a plate with my grinder and tightened it into the gearbox i cut the original engine mount of the gearbox as well this is original of the manual gearbox i cut the mount and i'm gonna make it well, with one hand is not very easy come on i'm gonna make it sit like this so if you can see either take is gonna be like this and then i'll probably need to figure out what i'm gonna do with that bolt but that's mine. I'm gonna tack this, then I'll take to the garage to fully weld, pro like proper weld to be strong, in case it doesn't break it. Um, now I need to line the turbo with um, with a line the turbo, not the turbo, the um, the engine with the drive shafts, the turbo, everything. The engine needs to be. On his original place. So what I done? I got the turbo from Luis from Skiller Turbos. Um, it's a twenty-eight sixty-nine. I'll show you. Twenty-eight is upside down, but twenty-eight sixty-nine from Skiller Turbos. It's a big, big turbo. Um, hopefully the gearbox will take the power so i'm gonna fit the tub in place i'm gonna fit the tub in place lined up with the exhaust hopefully gives me 
an idea where the engine needs to go. If it needs to go backwards, it needs to come forwards. That's the plan. So I'm gonna install the turbo now and go from there. So I welded the engine mount already, as you can see. Made this little bracket here to reinforce this mount. So when it makes pressure at the back, doesn't bend this plate. This plate is actually quite thick, but when with the movement, they might bend because it doesn't have anything from the bottom, just a, a flat plate. And you probably can see it's already a little bit bent like upwards, but um, so yeah. I done that, welded all around, as you can see. Um, now we're gonna fit on the car, fit on the gearbox, tight everything up properly. Actually, can show you what this is gonna look like. So basically, this sits there, then this one goes over the top, and hopefully, with is not gonna break. I'm sure it's not gonna break. And I'm gonna put this on and see. We're done with the engine mount. The engine mount is on its own place. Um, we, are, we weld everything, we tied everything, everything is tight, is tight there. Underneath of the car, we're done with the um, dog mount. Uh, we have to cut this plate a little bit but if you have a plate of the Golf MK4 they should fit there easily um, it's, a, it's a little bit to the side the dog mount but I don't think it would be an issue I'm gonna leave it like that for now and we'll, we'll see what's gonna happen um, the gearbox is just flush with the subframe I would want a little bit higher but I couldn't make any higher because the um, oil cooler on the way the oil cooler is on the way as you can see I have to um, grind a little bit off so we'll be able to fit because I don't want to modify this engine mount because uh, the future if we go back to um, manual gearbox uh, I'll have to buy another one so we're, go we're gonna keep it like this and we'll see uh, fit some of the wiring in um, I think it's ready to start a pro part from this plug with a match with a start motor so I have to pinch the start motor and the plug from my Audi uh, the turbo is in place it lines up with the, with the exhaust ish I may need to I don't know if I can show you Cut this this bit of the gearbox here. I think it's a mount of some sort. Let me see. You probably can see that it's touching a little bit there, but the exhaust still fits. But I think it'll be easier to to cut the mount on the exhaust or bend the exhaust a little bit. I cut the mount on the gearbox or bend the exhaust a little bit. But yeah, that everything so far went well. Now we need to. Uh, take the linkage, this linkage off, take the linkage off that car, bring it into this. Then I'm gonna have to mess about with the drive shafts. I haven't done the drive shafts yet. So, um, yeah, but that is gonna be for another video. So, thanks for watching, guys. If there's anything you guys want to know, or if there's anything I have missed on this, um, Leave in the comments below. I'll try to reply. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget, likes, like, share and subscribe. Catch you on the next one.